Facebook Live event, and our, it's, it's our first one, so hang in there with us. Virgins, virgins, virgins. <laughs> we love being a virgin. I am Lisa Scatolini, and, and this is Francesca Saratella. My daughter! Thank you so much for joining us today. Now, let, let's just see, can we get this to come up on our thing? Working Where the technology. It? Oh, there we go. Oh, here we are. Oh, oh yeah. Tech wow. savvy. Okay. My so roots that. look so dark. <laughs> Not like in real life well, when my hair is naturally blonde. Sorry. That's so true. So natural. <laughs> Thank you. Let's, what are we talking about today? We're talking about our new book, which comes out July 11th. I need a lifeguard everywhere but the pool. Right? Because we do. Yeah, honestly. we do. Well, the, the whole idea was she thought of the title, which I think is awesome. Because <laughs> I think everything she does is awesome. But the real truth, it's kind of like about, like, if you're a woman, you know, you always thought there was going to be a Prince Charming and you're bummed because everybody else is a Prince Charming and you don't, just hypothetically speaking, because I'm divorced wife. <laughs> but then I said, you know what? There isn't one. There isn't really always a lifeguard. You can be your own lifeguard. Right. And that's great news. Yeah. I mean, I guess it's it's sort of the news. You have to deal with it, whether it's the button. <laughs> that would not be. Oh, right. I mean, but also, we're totally capable. <laughs> and also, the other thing I think, the book, first of all, the book's funny. We have, this is our eighth in the series. Oh, my gosh. And they make is you, it really eighth? Yes, I know. Oh. And they make you laugh out loud. And they're fun to read on the beach. Yeah. Because they're really about life as a woman and also mothers and daughters. Mothers and daughters. Just all the kinds of things that women face. The big challenges, the little challenges, like... Whether or not it's empowering to wear a one-piece bathing suit or whether you're just giving up on the two-piece. I can't, <laughs> I can't decide about that. Right. What does bikini ready really mean? It means if you're ready, to, if you want to wear a bikini, you are bikini ready. That is, that is what is, is true. I just want to feel like it's true for myself when I'm in that dressing room, <laughs> and I don't. And that's the kind of stuff we write about. It's just like normal stuff that you think about, you know, little things or weird stuff that happened to you. Um... Like, for example, the time I was, I'm a gardener. I'm a really bad gardener. That's not true. She, you're actually, your garden looks you, beautiful. Honey. Except for the time I came home one day, and there was like a big bowl of snakes in the front yard. And that apparently, was the craziest thing. She was there, and it was like a nightmare come you to life. You need to slow down this description, like a ball of snakes. People are like, what are you talking about? The snakes were in a ball. And they Literally, were writhing around. 30? And like I went, started screaming, because that's like what I do. And I screamed for my daughter. <laughs> And she came out, and we were both horrified. Then well, she started I love filming nature. it. I'm not afraid of it. I, I will tell you, nature. it was a little apocalyptic. It, it was, was actually completely creepy. 25. So then we looked snakes. it up on the internet, and it said it was a snake. A ad. Well, it was a yeah. mating ball of snakes. I just wanted to get to the sex. People like sex cells. I told. I heard that. Oh, hola, chicas. Oh, wait. Oh, we're loved. Oh, wait. Something's and happening. from Chicago. Thank you, Ruth Diaz. We love that. Oh, look. See, this is our thing they gave us to look. This is great. Yeah, you guys can ask so us So send your absolutely. questions. We will answer <laughs> anything. Yeah. Don't they do that thing? No, nothing. I was just saying that. But then oh, sorry. You said it better. I got excited. I know. No, I said it on top of me, but not better than you. <laughs> Please tell us you're not the only women who interrupt people, because mothers and daughters interrupt all the time. I feel like everyone's making too big a deal of the interrupting. Oh, great. Like, it's human nature. This is how people talk. You get an idea. I mean, I guess it's true that it's rude, and sometimes causes a lot of fights over nothing. Right, we do fight about we it. We fight over nothing. Because I interrupt constantly. Like that, more than we fight over something. Um, and we That's fight over true. interrupting a lot. That's but true. I feel like we both are just trying to use the interrupting as higher ground instead of actually... Like, both of us do it. Well, also, we get very excited. So you can't even wait till they're done the sentence to get your sentence out. And then all of a sudden, you're talking both at the same time, which is the best thing of all. Because then, you know, you're really excited. Right. Right. That's okay. true. Here we go. So, okay, we're learning our oh, tech. people are telling us they love Some us. Some people are joining. Ooh, men are joining. That's good. Ow. Ow. I know. No, I'm only kidding. I'm trying to fix my shirt. <laughs> Does anybody else feel like button-ups? It's like, you can never get the button right where you want it. Like, if I undid this one, it would be way too much. But this one, when it kind of falls here, it's like... What, am I going to church? Like, no, I mean, I can never, I always put a little safety pin at the in-between spot for dates. Oh, and the safety pin. Which probably pin, gives me away. You should not do the safety pin. I'm really good at it, though. No, I really, like, I people, leave it. When you see people on TV, have you ever noticed, like, if they have the safety pin, you're like, I see that little telltale oh, silver no, glint. Oh, no, you don't even know. People on TV, they've got, like, the alligator clamps behind. That's, they're all gussied up. you got no idea what you're looking at. Yeah, Same with online need. shopping. We need alligator clamps. No, <laughs> then they have to, like, no, okay, if you're me, to the phone. you're going with the boxy. This is a middle-aged thing. We write about this, too. Are there any other stories that you particularly enjoyed writing? or? Well, I write about stuff like that I think normal people encounter. Like the time I went and bought, I wanted to make something special for the holidays, which is the time you should never try to make anything special for the holidays. You should make the same That's damn thing over and over that you could do blindfolded. So what happened is just us for the holidays, because yes. we're like a really tiny family. Yes. And... Um, 
And I wanted to make fava beans because I read about that, and that's supposed to be so good for you. So I buy all these fava beans, and I get them home, and I practically cut my fingers off trying to get them out of the shell. Which is strangely fitting because the only thing most people know about fava beans is the Hannibal Lecter connection. So right. I like that you're the only person in America with a really positive association with fava <laughs> beans. You're like, I know, the perfect holiday dish. Um, I like to get ambitious during the holidays. That's a, We fight over that. Because I have like That's right. really big ideas about the types of cooking dishes I can pull off. I want it to be new and fresh. I mean, Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that. And um, you just enjoy the fruits of my labor while I do, because really, about it you know, you always, we always joke, but, you know, and when we started writing these books, we wanted to write about our family, because the truth is, you know, I think you have a lot of times in life you have an idea, like, this is the perfect family, and the perfect family is, like, Norman Rockwell with a lot of people around the table, and really, it's us, and we have, like, together six dogs and two cats. <laughs> and occasionally, some other family and friends join. It's not that sad. I feel like people are always like, no, it's just you the- come to our house. People have been so nice and invited us to their Thanksgiving. It's like, no, we'd rather just be, like, crazy ladies and cook enough for ten people just for us. That's what <laughs> exactly. we really want to do. And that's usually, she's really so good at, like, um... You know, let's try a new thing. So she's going, what, that you made that carrot roll that time? Carrot wellington. We were trying to do the vegetarian thing, which, like, no judgment to anybody else, but that's what we're trying to do. Right, we miss meat every minute. (laughs) But, um, but, so I'm trying to make us feel excited about that instead of depressed that we're not having turkey, turkey, so I wanted to make carrots wellington, like beef wellington, but with carrots. (laughs) Isn't that amazing? No, it actually came out really great. It just took, like, six hours of prep. Right, it was. It sounds, and you had to get some very esoteric spices. You oh, know yeah. that you're not serious cook unless there are spices that you cannot pronounce, like anisa or something. Or what did you get? Something anise? Like no, not anise. Something I else. I don't know what that is. But uh, we were like crushing cocoa nibs. I I was going to the next level. <laughs> cocoa um, nibs. Yeah, like. What? <laughs> um, but it came out great, and everybody was happy, and people were very impressed. Right, so we write about normal family stuff. We also write about, like, dating stuff. I am celibate, because uh-uh. I'm Stop a middle-aged it. woman. You don't but need to volunteer that. There was a time when she was uh, not dating, and she called it the guiatus. I was. I was, you know, there is so much. It's wonderful that now we have so much technological help with the dating apps and the this and the that. But I feel like now we've made actively looking for someone, everybody's homework assignment. Like, you're just not allowed to just live anymore and be out in the world and oh, be open to it. And that's sort of where I was. It's it's now like, oh, you're single? And what are you doing about it? Which I kind of was, to, you know, reacting yeah. against. I was, re- what do you, you lost our spot. I know, listen, you better also okay. messed up the iPad. Go ahead. But just what I was me. rebelling against. So, you know, and I just had a lot going on with my job, with writing these books, writing my novel, working. And I just kind of wanted to make sure that my free time wasn't only about putting myself out there for men that I don't know. I was just so surprised. And when I told people that, they were like, so like, you, you can't do that. And I would like to suggest that I'm not sure if any guy who's ever said, oh, I'm just so busy working, I don't have time to date. Nobody thinks that person is like a freak who's going to blow up their whole life. <laughs> right. It's like, oh, right, you're an ambitious man. But when a 30-year-old woman says it, everybody's like, Oh, so you don't want kids? Like, like as if I'm wiping out the whole decade because I'm not on a dating app right this second. But right. so I had to think of a, like a funny joke name for it, a guiatus, a hiatus from guys. And it's then people, name. then it like went down easier for people. They were yeah. like, okay, yeah, as long as you're still taking a little it. break, Yeah, and so break. and the other things you write about, like I see one of the questions is where is your Duncan? And that's a question because I think you know everybody who does everything. Oh, in the your world, Dunkin' I mean, Donuts. My Dunkin' Donuts. So we're right, we're writers. But I was a lawyer before. Everybody, if you're lucky, has some kind of job. And you get, like, little things about your job that help you make you do it better or you think. You just have fun. You think it. I mean, it's, like, the... it's a talisman for you at right. this point. It's right. a magic chakra. That and is I am the, the queen of uh, food routines. So my key food, and writers especially have that. Because, yeah. like, if you've read about Hemingway, he thinks, you know, they always, right. like, it's always, like, booze. And I'm like, I'm, uh, I don't, it's not really that. It's because we have nothing else going on. So, like, thinking about our next meal is, like, a really big deal. <laughs> right. Every man who works at home is just right. thinking Imagine about lunch. Imagine if the only thing you. you had to distract yourself at work was, like, you're the silence of your own thoughts. You know, it's not like we can't even have anybody just, like, knock, knock. Hey, I want to chat. No, we just have to think about our food. Right. Crying. So one of the things I wrote about in here is, here's, a, here's an advanced copy of our book, which is so cute. Um is that I wanted to write about that stuff because I know it's, you're trying to write as best the the stuff of normal life. Every time you try to write, you're trying to write something that's really true, whether it's emotionally true or literally true, so that people relate to it. They go, oh yeah, that's like me. That's the kind of book I like to read. That's the kind of book I write. So there's a long way of saying that I love Dunkin' Donuts coffee, but I was like, I need, 
Dunkin' Donuts coffee to write, and it has to be extra cream, extra sugar, and it has to be the extra large size, not the medium, and I get However very sweet weird. you're imagining her coffee, you're not imagining it sweet enough. Like, you need to imagine if cotton candy had a coffee flavor and was hot and molten. That is her. It's so much cream. It's like it's like a dab of, of cocoa color in it. It's all like milk. It's, it's all so much Honestly, sugar. You could do whatever job you have it's on that. It's crazy. Oh, and also, like, you question. can't make it yourself. You have, to, you have to get it from the store. True. Where they know. I know. That's what I wrote about trying to make it myself. And here, I'll flip to the end of the story. You can't. Okay, here we go. Here's a question. Which do you enjoy more, writing fiction or essays? Oh, that's so hard to we say. We both. Well, I like I write sort of thrillers. Right. They're really fun. But I got to tell you, I love writing these stories because they're so real life. Right. And I love to make people laugh. And as you can see from this, <laughs> we like to laugh. And I think humor gets you through a lot of right. situations. We get a lot of um, great email about this book. And a lot of times people go, your book's got us through chemo. Like, yeah. it made us laugh. Yeah. Right. That's such a joy. I think it's... Writing a novel is great to get to like explore one story so long, but it's such an attenuated, drawn out, long process. This is so satisfying to get to. You get an idea, you can sort of think about it, get it out of your system, share it. Um, it's also like the silver lining to when any annoying thing happens. We can be like, this can go, this go in the book. Like you're getting, like your comeuppance is coming. <laughs> That's right. If some guy is really rude to me, it's like, guess what, bud? Somebody. I was just recently out with a guy. And I told him what I did. I said, oh, well, you know, I actually write about my life for a living. He goes, oh, are you going to write about me? And I said, that's up to you. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, like you can either, the pen is mightier than the sword. You can live in infamy or in glory forever. Like, if you want to be a <laughs> terrific right. guy, you could be the terrific guy who changes all my opinions. So, there you, there you, you never the know. But, so, this is just so fun, and it's personal. And you, that connection is really important to us, too. You know, when you write about yourself, it's, it feels really vulnerable. And we try to make sure that we are so that it connects with readers. Um, and we hope that we do do that, because when we actually get to meet people, our readers on tour, it, the connection feels that much more real. Like, it's a little scarier when you're writing it, on our end, when you're alone writing it, because you're like, gosh, is this going to resonate? Are people just going to think that I'm really gross, <laughs> that I haven't, like, shaved my legs all winter? Something like that. Um, but when it, then when people actually do connect, they literally are connecting with you. So I think that that connection, that storytelling connection to us is so important. And it makes our readers and listeners and everything feel, oh my gosh, I mean, we feel like so loved up by you guys. We're so grateful. Yeah, so true. thank that's you. True. Yeah, this and is the thing fun is also, way. as Friendship said, we really have to be truthful. Like we always secretly say to ourselves when we're writing these things, if it doesn't make us cringe, it won't right. make you laugh. So like I write about the first time, like I found a great chin here. <laughs> And I thought I was turning into an Amish man. Oh my gosh. Like now, you might not get that if you're 20, but you will totally right. get that if you're 40 and up because it's gonna happen. And I told her I was like, it doesn't have to be gray. You don't have to say that. You can, but I know. you did. You're you're fearless. Your portraits and courage. It's really true. Yes. Let's just see. Oh look, people say nice things about books. That's great. We Aww. love people who read. We really do. And also, listen. You know, we're here in this really weird room. You're probably wondering, like. They have an ugly house. But in <laughs> right, fact, we should talk about that. We are in the studio today. Yes. We are recording the audiobook of I Need a Lifeguard Everywhere But the Pool. Right. We have recorded every audiobook of our own from these books, <laughs> which is so great. Shout out to our great publisher who let us. Yes. Because it's a personal story. And to me, I was like, we, no one should do that but us. And also, listen to us. We have these great accents from Philly. I was always like, what accent? And then I heard myself say bad in a title. And I was like, oh, no. What's, what's bad about bad? Exactly. Exactly. But it just feels natural for us to read it. And, yeah, it's it's a fun process. You get to feel like you put the big, you know, these big, oh, I don't know where they are, big uh, headphones on, and this cool microphone. It feels yeah. like the you're nerdiest the recording studio. Like, you're the nerdiest uh, recording star in the world, right? Like, Alicia Keys is, like, actually a really cool recording star. We're book recording. We, but, like, <laughs> it's not like Aziz Ansari when you said that. <laughs> book no. recording. We love him. We have a crush on him. You just do it, like, really neat. I just want to, I just think She needs be, to work on the Aziz Ansari. a great son in law for me. Thankfully, the Aziz Ansari impression is not part of the audiobook. <laughs> So, but it's really fun, and I love listening to audiobook, especially audio memoir, because it, it's so personal. It's Whenever I'm trying to come up with what I'm going to write about in these essay books, I try to think, what is the story that I told my girlfriends over drinks to make them laugh? So, honestly, I feel like the audiobook is the original way of thinking through these fun stories to tell. Well, seriously, I think that's kind of a true thing. And I, I sort of love it when, and Francesca is writing fiction now, too. She just finished her first novel. It's actually pronounced Francesca. Uh, oh, <laughs> 
What did you name it? <laughs> it came out Francesca that time. <laughs> I never I know, so much. Know. I was just, but when I, no, I forgot what I was going to say. I got so excited oh, with my love for you. I it was about how up. telling it. Oh, is it natural. was that people go, you know, it's really nice because people who read us when on tour, they'll go, um, we could never write a book. I go, oh, yes, yeah. you can. Because really right. what you're doing is just telling a story. Like when you watch this, right? And then somebody goes today, what'd you do today? Well, I was supposed to be working, but I watched the Facebook Live audio feed at one o'clock. <laughs> or what is it called? I called it an audio feed to try to sound cool, but that's, that's not even the word. Yeah. But anyway, you're going to tell a story about your day, right? You come home from work and you go, you, if you're, you know, somebody goes, how was your day? You go, well, this is what happened. And you tell a story. Right. Everybody can tell a story. <laughs> and so we tell tiny little stories in this which are about 800 words. And in all you're telling a story about 100,000 words, and it's really not different except whatever 800 is minus 100,000. And we talk really, do. really fast. So uh, if that's your that's thing, fine. that's really fun. No, I'm just kidding. We, we record it normally. No, in fairness, not to brag, but we have actually won several Audiophile Awards, which is a wonderful audiobook magazine. Say, that was really Earphones nice. Awards for Best Audiobook, one read by authors. That would be us. That's true. I know. Can you believe that? We were very happy. We really are honored. No joke. Aww. Oh, there's some hi, saying Mimi. nice things. Oh, they Same like me. Other saying books. Hi. That's very nice. Hi, Nance from North Carolina. That's so cool. It's great that you guys are coming in from all over the place. I know. It's really nice. We yeah. appreciate it. Yeah. Really, ask us any question you could possibly think of. We are not shy. And that's also realize. the thing I think about books that's very cool. I mean, I've written, I guess it's like 30 novels at this point, which is amazing because I, I look 22. Especially if you turn off all the lights and put me in like an interrogation light. I think we should take the fifth, don't you? I, mean, I know. We needed like the, whatever, like the like, soap star the, light filter. Yeah, like the filters. donut what thing you mean to be like Instagram really soft lighting. Like, you're like the 20 years old. Anyway, I forget the point I was going to say. Oh, sorry. It was probably no, it wasn't you. Whatever, connect me. And, you know, I don't know. You could probably do it for me, actually. Probably most daughters could probably finish their mother's sentence, which would. Right. And it does haunt me. Right? <laughs> I know, yeah. Well I, well, I think the coolest thing, we write a lot about parenting in this, too, because I think being do the mother... Do I do, because... She's still... Pa- I'm 31, but she's still parenting me. Why are you write, but the, I stop think the cool writing thing, about parenting me? I think the cool thing, and I think a lot of women my age would agree, that, you know, first off, you're always in your kid's life. And that's really fun. You have to remember to stop saying your kid, but soon I'll remember to stop saying that. It's so funny. Like, we'll get invited to something, I don't know, a a wedding or a bridal show or something. She goes, oh, can I bring my kid? And they're like, can she sit still through an entire dinner? And it's like, she's 30. So, yeah, she can. But, I mean, I do think, even though I love to tease you and give you a hard time about you it, do. and you I do, do give her a hard time me. because she does think of me as a, a kid and a child in need of help. But at the same time, you are still, you know, my mom, and I think this is true of a lot of my girlfriends, she's still my first phone call when something really good happens or when something really bad happens. Um, oh my god, my bad pimp, my AIDS. Right now I'm really aware. Now I'm self conscious no, no, about it's my good. accent. It's cute. It's true. Think like, bad happens. Get back to saying the good things and about me. And even when you know, she's also my boredom call. I don't know if you guys do this, but like if you have to be waiting for a train or you're, well, I have a long walk. Like that's I always call my mom because I'm just like, well, why not? Why not I just call my mom? I call my mom when I have nothing interesting to say. You're the only person who gets my just like. I'm hey, interested in everything you say. But I think that's, that's true of a lot of my friends. And I think that's why we sort of write these and, and they do well and makes us really happy because they. You're writing about the stuff of parenting, but it is a different job parenting not, an, an adult child. I don't think of it as parenting. It's, well, it's a relationship. Like, you're not right, parenting Right, but I'm still me. your mom. You don't call me like Lisa. Right, but I'm, you're not like parenting me. I don't think you're not. I think I'm. A, well, I'm going to take like, you on and thank you right now. In fact, it was so weird because we were, well, I guess it's all the point, but we just saw Snatch this weekend, which is funny, funny movie with Goldie Hawn and um, Amy Schumer. And that was one of the few things in the world besides our books that is really about, you know, positive, but the real truth about mother-daughter and relationships, which is what positive, we write about here. not sugar-coated. That's what I think about. Like, here's a, here's a time we wrote about where last year I was invited to throw out the first pitch for the Philadelphia <laughs> Phillies. That's crazy. On oh, ladies' oh. night. This year, she's going to do it. Lady Smith. Feeling. Right. Anyway. There's a so lot of that. I, I realized, oh, my God, that is, A, that's a huge honor, and B, I don't know how to pitch. And also, I don't want to let all of womankind down. Like, if you have ovaries, right. I was, like, representing, so I had to be all over the situation. Right. And basically, a long story short, I, like, tried to learn how to pitch from books, which, quite honestly, I'm a big book fan, but you can't really pitch unless you try. And so I went to a high school, 
a local high school where she went to high school. Yeah. And they helped me, and the team helped me. You were and so then good. I ended up liking hanging out with the high school baseball team so much that I wrote the whole novel about it, which is called One Perfect Lie. Oh, right. That's where you got, that's where you got the idea? It is exactly where I got the idea. <laughs> See, I'm like learning uh, aren't like I, an I'm onion. fascinating, actually. So many layers I, of her <laughs> that I know. <laughs> But yeah, she's actually really athletic. You're like a mighty no, mom. no. She's five two of oh, pure please. muscle, and oh, go she on. got that ball all the way to the catcher, who happened to be the Philly fanatic. <laughs> the but catcher was like, yeah, it was very a cartoon figure. But you got it to okay. him, so right. I was impressed. Well, this year you will have this to do year, the same. I have to do it, and I am sort of terrified. Like it's really funny to be like, oh, my mom, can she do it? Like now I have to do. It. I'm I'm actually really scared. I have to practice. And that also means I have to find a place in New York City that's large enough to, like, throw a ball that far because everything is so cramped Right, because she lives in New York. I'm going to, like, bean somebody in the head trying to practice this in Washington Square Park. It's not going to be good. I guess I need to go to Central Park, which is all the way uptown. <laughs> it would be really hard. Um, yeah, that, that will be my cute, like, dating app opening line. I'll be like, can you teach me how to pitch? Oh, oh no. Gosh, then they have to do the thing with you. Go, here, honey, you stand right, here. Like, and right. I hold That's your like hand for you. Golf. Does that work for that, pitching like a, a ball? I feel like. Uh, yeah, I, I think you could do it. Yeah. Yeah, because I want to hug you, so they'll think or of some like, reason But to. really, I really, my 90s fantasy would be that, like, Gina Davis from League of Their Own comes out to teach me. Like, that's <laughs> who I really want to teach me if Madonna and Rosie O'Donnell were like, come on, kid, throw it at us. Like, that's my, that, I have saw the movies. You know, and in seeing the two of us together, you know, we co-author these books. You might right. wonder how it is that we work together, since we obviously, like, are in each other's faces constantly. <laughs> and it, you had, a, you said once to me, she said, you know the way I work best with you. Across state lines. It truly really is an important safety measure for working <laughs> with your parent. And I think anybody in any kind of family business knows a little what I mean. But yes, we write our essays separately and then we compile them. But it's, you know, it's always eerily similar, like how they fit together. People are like, oh, well, you must plan out all the topics so that... You, no, we, no. We don't we plan see, anything. Right. Not, not, we're not planners. <laughs> but we don't need to because we're freakishly similar. And they always <laughs> dovetail. <laughs> right, like good they, a good example is, um, so she had written this essay, and it's sort of, they're funny stories, not really essays sound so, oh, God, vote for me. But it's really, an, <laughs> it's really a funny story about how she reads the wedding announcements in the newspaper, and she goes, oh, my God, I, does, I haven't does, met anybody. You does tell. anybody else do that? I mean, I think it's impossible to read those wedding announcements and not compare yourself. I don't know why, but you're just like, oh, she's 33, I'm 31, which would mean... I would definitely need to know who the guy is if I was going to marry him by 33. I would need to know him. I would need to already know him. Which of my male friends is my husband? Like, you get crazy. And, you know, I had to call myself on, like, how, how silly this was. I think of myself as a feminist and a smart woman and an educated woman. And here I am, like, a Jane Austen heroine and not even the main heroine. Like, <laughs> the reading it and subtracting my age like a lame-o. And just generally obsessing, so it was sort of about that. And then we were trying to figure out where to put it in the book. And you had written one about... I had written an essay, but because I read the wedding announcements, but I read the obituaries. And I read them very, each one, because I love the stories of someone's life, and maybe they fought in World War II, and I go, look at that. And plus, you look at their pictures, they're all smiling, you go, oh, that's... I know, it's sad. You know, he's kind of cute, you and told me he's you dead. Were, you were subtracting your... Right, because I'm like, like, oh my God, like, he's at 75, like, I only have uh, 15 years, like, this is so unfair. It was, I was like, we both just need to calm down, Chill. drive carefully... We're, I just need to keep an act text and walk. It. Right, exactly. When you cross the street, be looking at the traffic, right. all the mom things that I tell her that I hope your mom tells you or that you tell someone else. Right. Very important. <laughs> what else? Let's see. Let's see if we got any other oh stuff. Oh, my God. Still, they like, they like oh, the nice books. Hello. That's nice. People hello. say nice things. Yeah. We also write about our life. Now, I think this deserves mention because we love dogs. Oh, we and love dogs. we also love cats. In fact, she... She loves cats so much, but I had two cats and she took one. I repoed that cat. Because that's like a cat napper. Isn't that a word? Oh, no, that's about napping. Sorry. <laughs> no, yeah, I had to because she's got like a mini mafia of little dogs now. How many do you have? Five? Five. So five of anything is like a little gang. And one of our cats loves messing with them and playing like Fox and the Hound. And she's all sly and she messes with them all the time. But this one, our black and white cat Mimi, was just would just cower in terror, and it was so heartbreaking. So I, I, I was borrowed it her, but then she was so much happier with me that <laughs> she had to stay. And now she just bosses around my dog. Like the irony is, she was too afraid of your dogs to stand up for herself. And then I get her, and she just bullies Pip 
who is the most mild mannered dog who doesn't care about what she's doing at all. I think but she doesn't bully him. She I just, think that she tweaks him. Like I think we started this series. That, I mean, the the first title was "Why My Third Husband Will Be a Dog," and I think it was really it's a joke, but it really is that. Dogs and animals can fulfill such a, a thing in your life, and we like yeah. to write about that. For example, lately I, I wrote about uh, having a senior dog, because I have my little corgi, yeah. and she's in one of those doggy carts. Like because a she got paralyzed as she yeah. got older. And now she's paralyzed in the front end, so you're kind of like, now look, I don't want to bum you out. She's not paralyzed in the front end. She's, she feels things. She just can't. She's not that mobile. Okay, so she's basically, if there's like, she's a bath mat with a cute little smile. And we love her, and she's remember. fine, and the vet says, look, I said, I'm not going to, you know, make hard decisions, put, put her down, basically, I'm not doing that. She, well, she's and really, the reason that the bath mat thing is so crazy, she's so active, like, and cheery, and happy to see us, and, and legs, and she can prop herself up, she just can't pull herself around by her front legs anymore in the cart as easily. We're keeping an eye on it, it's hard, but old dogs are saints, aren't they? Like, we... Yeah, she's so good, and she's and still we, bossy, and and we like to write about that. I mean, if you read these, you it's see so, all of the um, the stories about our animals and, and the different stages of their lives. And we also write about our family. I mean, we have written yeah. about my mom who passed on because I think you know we like this is really funny collections, but they're also some of them are very heartfelt. We've written about as and it's the kind of thing you guys have gone through. You know, when you you my mother, her grandmother, to whom she was very close. You wrote a wonderful essay about. Yeah. About when you did her nails, remember that? Yeah. Does that bum you out to talk about? A little. No, I mean, it was, you know, I was just really happy that for the the, the entire three last few months of her life, I came home and was able to care for her, and that was just, it was a really hard time. I think I felt every possible emotion, but it was a time I wouldn't trade for anything. It was also really beautiful. It was also really funny. I mean, she was just so funny to the very end, and that was, you know, it's it was nothing what I expected, but everything I cherish now, so... Yeah. Yeah. But I think you wrote about it, and you wrote about it really sensitively, and I think it's something that a lot of people go through. I mean, that's what family is. These books yeah. are about family, and they're about the times you laugh, and they're the times you fight, and the times you go to the movies together, and how you see each other in and out of this world. And... Yeah. We did that just like everybody else, so... Well, we're really grateful that, yeah. that you guys were here today, and... And we hope you'll get a copy of the book. Yes. You'll love it. Out July 11th. And there's one before that. It was called... What was it called? What do you mean? Does this beach make me look fat? And, right, I've got sand in all the wrong places, which is will be out in paperback. Our job is soon. to make you laugh. Right. Thank you very, very much. Thanks.